Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring Yamato. Get ready for a very, very spicy deck profile featuring OP07 here on the channel, and what you guys voted in. I thought I was out, but apparently, we have to dive back into a couple more Yamato lists here, in which I've developed. We are going to go over a very, very spicy variant in which is not going to be Wano focused. More so, we're not going to be doing the, the Hiori, the Otama with the Samurai. I've done two builds here recently. Those are my last two builds with Yamato here on the channel and which I very much enjoy. Probably one of my favorite iterations of this deck that I've created thus far. And don't get me wrong. I think we all were waiting for this card to be viable options, not only in like Yamato, but Perona. It's very, very fun here, especially when you can just draw into all of your Wano characters or cards that you actually need or to dig in for Hody Jones with Samurai. It is very consistent. We don't really necessarily need the hand size with this deck. It's more so about the, you know, the pressure on board, being able to swing huge, getting the nine slash, the uh, flame split or the Amaro to rest units, go face give you the double attack banish we know the thing here when it comes to Yamato but if you guys are more interested in a in-depth guide and all that sort of thing there are other videos here on the channel when it comes to samurai like I said my most recent two so you guys can dive into those if you guys want to figure out how this deck works when it comes to that but today we're gonna to take a peek at something else here in this current format now it's interesting because you know how aggressive Yamato can be. But what if we just play with all triggers in the current format? We slap in Nine Slash and Flame Split and we go to town. Being considering that you guys are going to be running into the big bad deck of the format, which is going to be Rob Lucci. That's not the right one, I'm sorry. Rob Lucci, there we go. And Black Yellow Luffy. You're going to need ways around or dealing with these these two leaders. Now, Nine Slash comes in, you know, clutch in most of these moments. Because this allows us to get past the blocker Sabo for cheap, even if we have Hody Jones in hand. So hypothetically speaking, in that matchup with Black Yellow Luffy, you can put any card on board. You don't have to worry about them popping it, right? So you can have an Ezo down. So hypothetically, you have Ezo on board, you play 9 slash, you rest this, you drop the Hody Jones. You have two huge swings in which you also don't have to worry about blockers. So going into this matchup really doesn't change all too much with Yamato. It just gets better for you overall, especially if you guys can draw into your pieces in the late game. Now, when it comes to playing into Rob Lucci, you got to take this matchup just like you would take Sakazuki. They run anywhere between 8, normally 8 to 10 2k counters, similar to Sokka. But they generally run the Sabos, whereas Sokka didn't really utilize them all too much. And Rob Lucci, that's something you have to pay attention to when you're playing Yamato. But again, 9 slash allows you just to get over them. The Rebecca blocker, which I think everybody is familiar with by, you know, nowadays... This card is irrelevant if you're playing Yamato, because everything that we do rests this. Izo rests this, Nine Slash, Amaru, Flame Split. This isn't the issue, period. It would be the Sabo blocker that you need to have Hody for to go for game, or you need to have Nine Slash to get around. And considering we actually got this card now, it gives us 3,000 power. You rest up to, you know, like an Izo or a trigger you got from the previous turn rest it, get over this, go face, is really, really fun. Now, there's something else you guys have to consider here, and that matchup is going to be Onami. Again, this deck will generally run 8 to 10 2k counters, mostly, all right? So to be able to have the option of dropping um, Spandom on turn 1, Spandom on turn 1, or doing a Spandom into a stage on their following turn or what have you, if they're whiffing or they're not getting 2k counters, because most Rob Lucci's would just throw stuff in trash to fill it up for Gekko Moria, or sorry, for Gekko Moria, the 8 cost, or like cards like Rob Lucci, that's fine. If they're not drawing their 2k's or what have you, you don't always have to swing in for 8, for 7, to make sure these guys go down, right? The first big swing is your bread and butter, of course. 
But if you can pay attention to what cards they have in hand, you might not necessarily have to go for 8k, for 9k. Because again, with the very little counter this deck runs, most of the time they're opted to just take the hit. And if that's the case, the following turn, you can slap down an Onami with the Flame Split to rest of Rebecca and just go to town. But overall, we're going to dab into a bunch of games today. I don't know how many we're going to do because this deck goes this deck goes really, really fast, guys. I'm trying to tell you. It goes really quick. We'll probably play maybe five, maybe five games or what have you and see how we do. But overall, let's dab into a bunch of games. I'll catch you guys in a split second. Let's go, boys and girls. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dab into a bunch of games today. Come at you guys with OP07, Yamato, playing into Newgate. This should be a, a tough matchup, especially considering uh, the amount of... I want to say big bodies this man can stick on board that have rush, which we generally don't have all of the counter for, but we'll see what we can do. We also have to keep in mind they do run with the guard points, the radical beams, in case you guys are new here to Newgate. This is a very, very defensive deck, which should showcase the power of Yamato, especially if we can get a couple cards off life here. But we're going to poke him for six with Banish. This will force him to give me a 2k counter, or a 1k at the very least. It's... I'm kind of trying to thin the hand, at least for the next turn, because that way we can drop it down a, another Onami and go for it again. If they opt to take this, they're in a worse situation than guarding, so that's good. Four cards, they go to four. We go up to eight, so that means they need to leave a guard point ready. Unless they're playing cards here on board, like a Shariah blocker or what have you, because I know some Newgate decks run that blocker. And we won't be able to get around it with the Onami swing, but we'll see. This goes five, seven, actually. That's fine. Cool. We won't use this. There's no reason to. Another seven. We'll guard this one, just in case, right? One Dawn active. Let's go for it. Give us another banish here. So the only way out of this is by giving me 4k counter, right? Is that 4k? Yeah, 4k counter or a guard point. They did float one Dawn, so I'm assuming they have it. Okay, never mind. And this should be the game here. Let's go ahead and clear the Machina. Let's go ahead and clear the Ezo here. That way this takes out, you know, one attacker that they have. Cool. Six on active. We go into ace next turn if they deal damage to us here. I don't really want to give them all of our counter cards, because this could be a Luffy turn. Which I think would kind of be irrelevant, because Luffy's really just doing either one damage if I let it, or he clears a, you know, Onami on board. He's got seven in hand. I'd probably wall up if he has defensive units. Okay. Pressure's on. That is fine. As much as I want to save her, there's no reason to keep her on board. I'd have to invest a little bit of a Dawn to actually swing into Newgate here. I think this is fine too. This way I can play Ace and get the attack in. Ooh. Hmm. We'll save it. I think we can just go 6k and just swing. Just because most new gates are just opted to take the last life here, there's no reason for him to guard out. Alright, never mind, I guess so. Unless he didn't have the counter, but you know, that's fine. Let's go 6 into an Onami. We'll swing into the, the Luffy. I think if he decides to give us the Luffy, we'll just pass. But if he decides to guard out, I'll run the ace into Luffy as well. See if we can try to get rid of it. There's no reason for me to swing into life because I think he'll just be opted to take the hit. He got one Dawn active. So he didn't swing in with 7k with Newgate here. So that tells me he does have an event. Otherwise, why wouldn't you just swing with it, right? Um, okay. All right. So the event is going to be saved for the ace. We'll pass. Because... If that's the case, he can clear Ace on the clapback if he wants to. By just swinging into it with Newgate. 
by attaching Dawn or what have you. It's probably better for us just to leave him standing and then go for game the following turn. I think that Onami earlier was pretty pretty huge in this matchup. Which, that's one of the easiest ways to beat this deck as Yamato is by having a couple Onamis. You just need one attack to get off and that, that's pretty much guaranteed most of the time. Especially if you hit a 2k counter or an event, it's really hard depending on what the New Gate's hand was going into that attack. Is that they let it go in, that means they didn't have enough counter to protect it in the first place. Kid and Killer. Not something I expected, to be fair. Unless he's trying to go for game here, but... Okay, no, he's clearing board. Interesting. This is kind of weird play, right? I guess we don't really know what's in his hand. Maybe this was his only option, but... I don't know. Fordon left to play around with. He has to have defensive pieces, considering he floated that Dawn over from last turn. He's gonna rip that life. If he ends up going 7k, we could be inclined to take it. Depending on what the trigger is gonna be. Because if we get any sort of trigger whatsoever here, I think we just win game. But we also might win without it. It's three left. So we have to assume one's a rad beam or a guard point. We'll take the hit. Oh, cool. I guess it really didn't matter what we got, right? Four, seven. I think... I think we stick down ace and just go for it. Because we still have options to play in Amaru here. Nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to rapid fire these videos as much as we can in hopes that we don't run into Bonnie. I know, it's, Bonnie's great, she's wonderful, love the deck, but as Yamato, that's something I don't want to see, so as long as I can avoid Yam or avoid Bonnie's today, we should be pretty good. Due to the fact that with all of our cards that we have in the deck, with Hody Jones, Nine Slash, Flame Split, Amaru, we cannot get over the kid, so without committing way too much, way too much Dawn investment. But it is what it is. We're going to into another matchup here with, looks like, VV today, which is interesting. Not a deck we see all too much, but I have seen VV come up every now and then in OP07. And it's not just on Sim. It's regional events, flagships. She's around, but she's still not doing, you know, VV things and winning a lot of things, winning a lot of games. She did win a flagship recently. Or was a bigger tournament, whatever you want to call it here. But it's nothing to, you know, the right home about, let's be honest. Let's go six. He has two cards in hand. I assume this would be an opted hit. Nice. And we can stick down Kikanojo here. I don't have a reason to play down anything other than this. This just gives me an opportunity of healing a life. And with going into six dawn, I don't have to worry about Gravity Blade yet. So, Kikanojo. Should be able to get off an attack here next turn as well. Jimbe, I like it. Okay, fair. Doflamingo, okay. A little spicy, a little spicy. Oh, come on. You guys didn't do this in your Vivi decks. Don't lie to me. It's pretty cool. But unfortunately here against Yamato, this three-cost blocker is very much irrelevant, especially if we can rest it the following turn. So he gets to draw a card off of his leader effect. She gives Jimbei rush. Do you swing, though? I guess Jimbei can swing five. Yep. Gets the rest of Dawn from the Nami. So that's two attacks coming my way. And I'm very much inclined to take both of these. There's one trigger. Get rid of, I guess, the Nekomoshi here. Can I get one more? Let's go, boys. Well, this is a quick game. Could you imagine that, though? A Satori and a Kikinojo coming down in one turn and can attack you? It's kind of nutty. Alright, so I need one of these attacks to land. And then we can play 9 slash the rest of Doflamingo and then hopefully go game. If she takes any of these hits, I think it's over. Oh, sweet. Bet. Say no more. She has no Dawn active. What has happened? 
Okay, so that Kaido event. I forgot that card exists. I think we don't ever see it, but it's fine. We can go 10k here with lead, and then 11k with uh, Kikinojo, because we can give it the two rested dot. And this should be GG, depending on when she gets off triggers here. Ain't no shot. Yeah, draws two cards. Hmm. I forgot about that thing. It's a little interesting to see it in VV, but... Go 11, and we call it a day. What you got? Uh-oh. Okay. Can we get there? I think we got... All right, ladies and gentlemen, rapid fire. Come at you guys with Yamato playing into whatever that thing is over there. Um, was that a blue purple crocodile, a blurple crocodile, whatever you want to call it? A deck that we never ever see. But hey, it be what it be. We're not necessarily top of the meta right now in the food chain when it comes to Yamato, but uh, let's say off meta versus off meta. All right, let's just call it that and leave leave it at that. Either way. Oh, it did have the counter. You know what? That's a little crazy, man. For them to just give me 9k right off the bat like that. Jimbe, you too, huh? Jimbe into Doflamingo, which is interesting. That must just be the combination that all of these other decks besides Doflamingo are doing that have access to blue now. Because Boa, Croc, Dofi, I guess Vivi, it's, it's a little weird. That's definitely a little weird to see. Hmm. I think this is going to be a weird play. Let's go five. I want to see if he'll block out with Doflamingo. He, he probably won't. Yeah, that's fair. So we get him down to three. Okama away. Sure. I think if we play the Onami here, he'll definitely give us the Doflamingo. I want to try to get him down to at least at least one more life here. That way we have flame split active. But I don't know if it's worth worth doing it. We can get rid of the Amaru. It's not really a big deal. Let's go 8k here. I didn't want to give him the Onami, right? And then just get rid of this blocker when I can rest it easily. So we didn't really have anything else we were gonna play this turn anyhow. So unfortunately, it'd be what it'd be. That's fine. I think it's better to keep the Frankies in hand for now. I want him to attack into us with lead. And if we get any form of trigger here, I think he'll be in trouble. Cool. No trigger. Another 2k, though. Not bad. Miss all Sunday. Wow. He is brave for not playing any sort of blocker here. Uh, what do? Okay. Not a whole lot, apparently. Okama way and another Jinbei. It's cool seeing that card, though, inside of Blurple Crocodile. Is that something else we have to consider here now? But he doesn't run the Kikinojo due to not being yellow. So he does not have the aspect of healing up, which is nice. 8 Dawn active. Potential for a big body to hit the board this turn. So we might want to play a little bit cautious here. What are you going to do? Five. Still eight. I think he's up to something, but... I think we possibly can go for game here in this turn. Another Missile Sunday into a draw. Weird. So he's got events. We have nine on active. So we play Hody Jones, we rest both events, we have Omaru up, and we should be able to go for game here. Give this the lead. We can't rest anything, that's a 5 cost. Let's do the thing with 8, you can't activate Okama Ways here. Or Spada. Let's go 10k here. 
Nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty nice to see, actually. Playing into another Yamato matchup. I'm hoping they're playing a different variation of me, which they should be. They are awesome. This deck is still one of the most flexible decks in all of the format when it comes to One Piece in the metagame, whatever you want to call it. Yamato can still be built multiple ways, so. Now let's just see. Uh, ooh, they whiffed. You'd love to see it. When you're playing against it, you love to see it. As Yamato, it kind of feels a little bad a little bit. But it's okay. Let's just do the thing here. We go the 8k. You're welcome. Let's see what they do here. A little weird. Alright. I would think you'd be inclined to drop an Onami swing for 7k or just get the big attack off because you need to have that done as Yamato at the very least hopefully they don't play another searcher here also whiffing mm -hmm. you need to check your ratios buddy 8k we'll take this that's two it's pretty cool running a what all trigger deck almost two bodies on board another Sanji blocker with five Don active we can play down ace here actually and then go to town because that would be four attacks he has to deal with the Yamato one he should guard out nice if we drop ace we can run Nekomamushi into Otama which I know feels a little weird it is a little weird but just in case they have Samurai for the next turn or what have you, I don't want them to be able to heal, or sorry, to rest and then draw two. We'll pass turn. I'll keep up one Sanji. Because I have noticed playing into these Wanu Yamato lists, I feel they're a little bit slower. Because you have to make room for the Samurai, the Otamas, the Hiyoris. So you kind of lose out on some of the Omarus and the Flame Splits to be able to rest you know, smaller blockers. Depending on your list, right? I showed you guys mine earlier, and I showed you guys different ways to build this, so. They're capable of doing it, it just feels a little bit... Mm, lacking, I guess, would be the word. Six into this. I kind of want to keep this on board, so. We'll give out the Frankie. Oof. Seven. They've got quite a bit in hand here as well. I wonder if we could just go for game here. If I can play 9 slash, go up to 8k with leader, or ace, or anything here on board. If we go 9, they would still need 5k counter. Banish would seem kind of irrelevant. I lose power on the swing if I drop the Onami here. I don't think the last card over there is going to matter all too much unless it's a zero cost or an Amaru. So if we go 10, this should be guaranteed. Nice. Let's just go 5, and we'll stack the rest of the Dawn on Ace, depending on what they do. Nice. Don't really have another choice here. And GG, maybe? Well played, well played. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and run this one back. It looked like Yamato kind of had a brick hand last game. They did have two 10-cost ace, so I'm going to assume this game will turn out different. And if it doesn't, it is what it is. We'll move on and do probably one more game after this one, and then we'll bring you guys back to the deck list. But either way... I feel like playing a aggro list, speaking of aggro list, we get a, our first trigger, our second trigger off life. I feel like playing an aggro list into the current meta is very, very strong with Yamato. It's different considering that the Wanu package is by far one of my favorite variations with the deck. It allows you to draw a numerous amount of cards, it allows you to heal up, get bodies on board that are generally the Momo blocker, which is your key piece in the Wano variation, but there are times where 
if Rob Lucci, for example, Gecko Moria, whoever attacks you, often not, you guys don't get triggers. Because we don't run with a lot of triggers in a Wano variation, except for like Kikinojo and then Nekamamushi. That's pretty much it when it comes to triggers that are relevant. We do get the Onami, but eh. Now, I've learned that playing Wanu Package into decks like Rob Lucci, it's a lot easier for them to deal with the, um, what do you call it? Deal with one body at a time on board. Whereas they don't run with a lot of triggers, therefore they're not getting a lot of bodies on board. So you're not going to see a lot of Satoris, you're not going to see a lot of Sanjis or, or what have you pop off those triggers if you're playing a, a, a Wano build. Therefore, Rob Lucci has an easier time with just dealing with one unit at a time instead of multiple. Because multiple, they'll need more resources. We're going to guard out here. I need Ace on board to go for game. But I've realized, though, doing a Yamato into a Yamato, an aggro variant, if they hit us once and we get multiple triggers, that's pretty much a GG most of the time. This they can have. I was hoping they'd go for face, but I guess logically clearing board there was probably the better play. Speaking of Momo, I wonder where their Momo was last game though. They really, you really need to see Momo in the Wanu package of, you know, Yamato to prolong yourself in the late game. Because there's going to be a lot of decks that just remove cards or just deal damage to you and you're not going to get anything off that trigger. Momo just gives you that extra life just that little bit sometimes that allow you to push for game. There's not a whole lot that we can do here. I don't necessarily want to give him the Kikinojo. I think playing the Hody Jones here would be not good because they go into their eight dawn turn next turn. If they decide to play Hody Jones, they just go face. We're at two life. Might not be the best. So let's give him the Omaru here. We'll go 10k with lead. So that should give them the Kikinojo, right? And then I can do one of two things after this. I can pass turn. If I pass turn, Ace is guaranteed to survive, right? Or, 10, 11, 12. We go 12k with Ace. This will force the Momo blocker. And then hopefully... He doesn't have another Momo for the following turn, and we can go Hody Jones and go for game. So let's try this out. Can we get there? Nope. Oh boy. Jake, what are you doing? What are you doing? Was that the right play? Okay. I mean... Got five Dawn active. That's going to be another Momonosuke, probably to bounce Hiyori. Or sorry, Kikinojo back to life. I think we need to keep the Ace on board. We can do this from Drop the Flame Split. This way, they have to make a choice to run the Yamato into the Ace or the Momo into the Ace here. Right? I think that's what they have to do. Because the five Dawn, yeah, there's the Momo. Cool. It's smart that they did that. Because I think they're they're anticipating Hody Jones are coming down, so but double double trigger again. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I am sorry. Like, I don't know what you're laughing at though, still. Like, I don't think it matters. Because you have three cards in hand here. And I'm pretty sure we don't have to attack you at all with the Nekamamushi to to get this game. Well, let's find out. Give the two rested. We go 10k. Yep. Yep. See? They didn't even need it. We didn't even need him. We didn't even need him. Because that goes up to 8k with Hody Jones. We're chilling. Because at the end of the day, he didn't have counter due to the fact that he threw 12k away of, of for the Mumbo blocker. This one will probably be the last game of the day when it comes to playing Yamato. And then we'll dive into another deck list here on the channel in which I want to get multiple done this week if I'm allowed to. I got to do some stuff tomorrow. And 
take care of my moms and stuff. Go talk to my mom, see how she's doing, holding up and everything. I know that was random, but real life stuff, you know, happens. It is what it is. I'm okay, so don't worry about it. I'll be fine. We'll have regular content as we normally do. Just going to go do some checkups tomorrow. After that, we will be diving into... I want to get back into playing Perona. I want to do a Gecko Moria list here on the channel. I know, ill black decks, I, I get you. I don't normally do a lot of those. If you guys have noticed my content, I'm not going to sit here and spam you guys with things like Sakazuki, Rob Lucci, and Nell, Katakuri. It's not normally going to happen. But I do want to showcase a Gecko Moria list that I've been cooking up. I haven't really dove into black decks at all this format, which is kind of weird, you know? So, we're going to give it a shot, see how that goes. That'll come up eventually. It seems like you guys didn't really want to see Gecko Moria in the recent poll, which is understandable. So, we'll probably do like a double feature. We'll do a Gecko Moria, and then we'll do another deck for that same day or for the, you know, back to back. If that makes sense. But in any case, let's dive back into this game here. We're not going to trigger this, by the way. Because of Rebecca here. We need to get Rob Lushi down to two life. Oh. Okay. So we have all the tools that we need to win here. Flame Split, Izo, Omaru. We go six. Actually. If I drop this to rest the blocker, right? We still have... No, 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 no. Let's just, let's just poke it. Let's just poke it. This will give them an opportunity of guarding out with a 2k or blocking with Rebecca. If they decide to take it, okay. You, uh, you're pretty much cooked, buddy. This will give Amaru, or it's not Amaru, Yamato plus one. We can rest this. We can drop down the Vanish Nami and go huge here. 9k swing with double attack Vanish. What do you do? That's right. Give me that whole hand. Let's go. One more 2k. Ooh, we get the Sabo out of that. Yo, you love to see it. You love to see it. So we'll take that. He goes up to, what, 7 Dawn here? Not quite Gecko Moria territory, but he definitely needs to put up another blocker. Because we do threaten lethal next turn. If he removes the Kikinojo here by any form of the matter, it doesn't really mean much. Sweet. He's not going to. 7k. We can take this hit. Ooh, Nekomamushi. Let's go. There's the Sabo. What he throws away here is probably going to be very, very key. Okay, Kaku. So that's removal. But it's also 1k counter. Sure. He got rid of two Kakus. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. We have two nine slashes, right? I need to rest the Sabo. Rebecca, again, is going to be irrelevant. I think if we do a nine slash, we give this to Yamato. We won't use the extra ability. I'll give the rest of Don to Nekomamushi. We'll take 7k into Rebecca. This should be guaranteed. Let's go. So how do we win from here? Can we win from here? I think we can. Okay, so I'll do a 9 slash. We'll give this to Onami. I'll rest the Kikinojo to rest the Sabo. He's got 5 cards in hand. So depending on what those two triggers are, whether they're 2Ks or not, I think that might lead him to survive. So we can go 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so we can go 9, 9 here. Can we get there? It doesn't matter because next turn he can't kill us, so. Nice. Dude, that hand, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the end of the video. I do want to appreciate everyone out there who decided to watch to the very end. Th today was a pretty special one. We got to dive back into playing Yamato a little bit here on the channel. And if you guys are new around here, this is one of the leaders in which I very much gravitated towards. As soon as OPO6 came out, this is the only deck I played 
consistently, whether it was at Locals, whether I was uploading videos here on the channel, I put out a lot of Yamato content. Therefore, this has the most flexibility out of any other leader that I've ever played in this card game right now, which is very, very fun. Due to the fact that this can be built in numerous different ways, there's going to be a build out there for everybody who's interested in playing Yamato. From aggro, from trigger happy, to Wanu package, to Fishman package, I've done them all. Now, don't get me wrong, every new set that comes out in the format, there's going to be new cards that are going to make this deck even better. In OP08, we gain access to a lot of brand new cards that you guys are already been questioning, already been asking me about. Yes, I will be doing showcasing of OP08 variations here of Yamato on the channel as well. I don't have it on this particular sim build, but you know, the Seraphine and all that sort of thing, they are coming. They're going to make this deck a lot scarier than what it is, I think, especially with S Snake. S Snake's going to do this deck very, very well, but we'll get into that later. Now, for those of you guys that are here in the current format or interested in playing this leader, if you guys did not like this build all too much because there's cards in here you want to play around with, with like um, the uh, Wanu package, like Momonosuke and all that sort of thing, I have two different variations of that list here on the channel. So make sure you guys go ahead and dive into this one if you guys want to figure out how this one works or if you want to do a variation of this. I go over this in my most recent Yamato video, but in today's video we did play a very, very aggressive form of aggro with some Wanu cards here, right? We got, we got some in here. No Thomas in this one, but overall, I had a lot of fun as I normally would with Yamato. I do hope you guys give this leader a try in the current format. We have a lot of decks that are still very scary to go up against as Yamato, but there are much less than there were in the previous format. We don't see a lot of Katakuris. Thank you, RP Law. You know, we don't see a lot of this deck, which is nice, right? So we don't have to worry about them just getting multiple triggers off life and then hitting us with Big Mom and Big Mom. We don't have to deal with that. But the bigger threats are going to be the RP Law matchup for sure, right? And this is only against a skilled RP Law player. I'm not saying you guys don't have skilled RP Law players, you know, at your locals, but we have some of the best of the best players out here in the DMV area. I kid you not. With that being said, though, there are other decks in the current format that can give this deck trouble. And I think you guys already know what that is. Rob Lucci, Gecko Moria. I feel like Lucci is irrelevant into this matchup. I don't care how good you are. I'm going to say it. I feel like this deck is just Sakazuki. Just not as good as Sakazuki. We all know it. It's basically the I wish I were Saka, right? And this matchup doesn't really change all too much as you're playing Yamato. It really doesn't. Gecko Moria, though, on the other hand, is a different animal. They can go wider a lot faster than Rob Lucci, and we have a problem dealing with them in OP07. We had a problem dealing with this deck in OP06. There's no way around it. It's just they feel bored very, very quickly. We have four life. What do you want to do? Every time we get a trigger, they also have the options of removing that card that hits the board. So the other matchup that's going to be very difficult to deal with is Black Yale Luffy. And I don't want to tell you it's hard to play into this as Yamato. I've dealt with this numerous times here on the channel on different variations, different deck lists when it comes to playing this leader. You got to see Hody Jones because you have to rest the, the Sabo blockers. But not just Hody Jones now. We've gained access to, you know, new cards such as Nine Flash here, which really helps you rest the Sabos to go for game. But overall, hopefully you guys did enjoy this one. Give this build a shot. And let me know what you think about it. This is the aggro variant of Yamato. Pretty much every card in this deck is going to trigger outside of your Ezos, your Hody Jones, and your Port and your Porcus D Aces, let alone your, your obviously your Heors. Everything else in this deck has a trigger of some sort that is valuable at all stages of the game. This will rest the blockers, which will be the Rebecca's or some other bodies on board you want to get around. This heals you extra life. This heals you an extra life. This gives you a 1000 power on counter and the trigger also rests the unit. You have multiple ways of getting in and getting out with Yamato very, very quickly. So hopefully you guys give it a shot. Let me know what you think about it. Your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I'll get into them as I normally do. I'll try to answer you guys as quickly as I possibly can. Overall, this has been Paul's Players. Remember to smash the like button, hop in the Discord, come tell me I suck. It is what it is. I will catch you guys in the very next one. Stay safe out there. I'll see y'all later.